Good afternoon. I'll start off by echoing, echoing what Christy just said. You know, thank you for your patience. I, I know everyone has a job to do, and it's often tough uh, to try to get information. And it's hard on us trying to. We want to provide factual information. We want to be uh, aware and conscious that there's families out there who are hearing the most devastating of news that they could possibly hear, and we want to make sure that it, it doesn't get out ahead of us uh, and before we have a chance to tell the families that we don't want them watching it on TV or reading it somewhere on social media. So I thank everyone for their patience and understanding. Um, I also have to, again, stand before bank of microphones and, and thank the allied agencies, um, so many of whom are here represented behind me, but our, our partners from the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, our, our federal partners, the state police, natural resources police, transportation authority, uh, Maryland um, Department of Transportation Authority Police Department, uh, Haverty Grace, Aberdeen, and Bel Air, our local municipal agencies who all responded uh, out here. Uh, and, and in fact, we're some of the very first cars on the scene from the municipal agencies within that five minutes I spoke about earlier. Um, this is a great partnership that we have in our county, and, and unfortunately, we've been uh, impacted by more than our fair share of these types of events. And uh, it, it, as tragic as they are, we, we know and we have seen that they can happen anywhere in a moment's notice, and, and they do, and they're devastating to the communities where they occur. Uh, a basic recap of what I spoke about this morning, that at 9.06 this morning, the call dispatch uh, received a, a call of shots fired at the Wright House Distribution Center, uh, located at 1501 Perryman Road. Uh, immediately, police officers from across the county responded uh, and were on scene in approximately five minutes. Law enforcement, fire, and EMS units uh, quickly paired up uh, and went into the um, warehouse area to the office area and to the warehouse area to uh, look for the suspect and to look for victims and provide treatment where uh, appropriate. At this time, I can confirm that there are seven people who have been shot in today's incident, including the shooter. Three people are suffering uh, from injuries which they are expected to survive. Uh, three uh, others are victims of our shooter who lost their lives here today. Uh, two at the scene and then one at the hospital. And the fourth loss of life is the victim, uh, the, I'm sorry, is the suspect, our, our shooter. The uh, victim's names we are not in a position to release at this time. We still have to make notifications and that's still a process that's ongoing. So we uh, are not prepared to release the victim's names. We will get them out as soon as is possible. Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26. Uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. Uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline, but at this time, what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m. the shooting began, striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime in, in the investigation. Again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. But over the last several hours, uh, our law enforcement teams, again, from all the agencies represented behind me, have been acti actively clearing and searching the 210 square foot facility. It's a massive building, and that's only a third of it. Uh, and they've been through all parts of the one building, 2,100 or 2,100, 2,010 square feet are all just Rite Aid. There's two other businesses that are equally big, and our law enforcement officers had to clear that entire building. Uh, at the same time, our detectives have been working tirelessly to interview anyone who was in the building or who might have information to help us further this investigation. I believe a short while ago, we tweeted out uh, the phone number, again, that's being answered at the dispatch center. If there's people with information that can offer us uh, related to the uh, incident here today to please reach out and so our detectives can be in contact with you. We are not releasing the suspect's information uh, at this time. I've heard that it's already out in the public, uh, but from our standpoint, the family there has not been notified. Um, and again, the investigation's early, so I will not be releasing that name at this time. 
Again, we have a family reunification center set up at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and as I said, this is early on in this investigation. And as it becomes, as more information, uh, I just ask you to be patient. As more information comes available, we will share it just as timely as we can. I'm going to ask the county executive to uh, offer a few thoughts, and then I'll take a few questions with the caveat that if I didn't mention it, there's probably very little I can speak about. Sir. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, as, I, as I mentioned this morning, we uh, uh, certainly thank our partners from around the state. Governor Hogan's uh, called and checked on us early this morning. I see Senator Cardin has arrived, and Senator Cardin called uh, to offer his uh, assistance. So we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we are become accustomed to this. I want to reassure Harper County citizens that, in fact, although this is the unpredictable, we train for the unpredictable. Our Sheriff's Department, Fire EMS, all our allied agencies and our volunteers performed perfectly the day as they carried out their duty to isolate and bring this uh, incident to a closure quickly and safely throughout the community. So we drill for this and, and they performed at the top uh, of their game today to do that. We move on. We're going to re reunite the families and provide services to the survivors. Uh, work with Rite Aid. Rite Aid's one of our original distribution warehouses in Harford County and a partner that goes back over 20 years. And so we will work with them uh, to rebuild and uh, bring their facility back uh, both through human resources and through capital to make sure they have a bright future here. So our thoughts and prayers go out to those victims. As county executive, I am grateful for the men and women that stand behind me, uh, that when I listen to the radio, risk their lives to enter a warehouse where they don't know if there's a shooter. They don't know how many victims they have, and yet they go in, uh, find the situation, and bring it to a closure. So to all of our public safety first responders, I say thank you to all of them and to my partner, Jeff Gaylor, the sheriff. Uh, we unfortunately have perfected this and I hope that we don't have to do this again uh, in the next 10 years or ever. But we've got a lot of problems in this country to solve to bring these kind of incidents to a closure. But thank you, Sheriff. Senator. First, to the county exec, thank you for your, your leadership here in Harford County. Uh, on behalf of your federal delegation, uh, our offices have been in touch. Senator Van Hollen and Congressman Rubersberger, my office, have uh, been in touch. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased that our federal agencies are working in cooperation with the sheriff and with the county. And we know that the FBI has been involved. We know that ATF has been involved and DEA has been involved. We just want you to know that we are here to partner with you to get as much uh, help as possible to understand what happened and to obviously reach out to those families, uh, the victims, uh, our hearts go out to them. As the county exec said, this happens all too frequently um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tragic situation. Uh, we are so proud of the work of our first responders, uh, the work that they do, uh, entering uh, places where there is incredible risk and danger in order to bring as much calm as possible. So we thank our first responders and we want you to know that the federal team is here to work with the county, with the state, do everything we can to, to help in the investigation and to help the families. Where did the shooter, where did the suspect shoot herself? Do you know what part of the body that the shot was in that caused her to die? Any problem? Uh, the suspect shot herself in the head. Is there a connection to terrorism at this point? Uh, no, uh, we we do not have a motive yet, so everything is being explored. Um, that will be explored, but that is not uh, high. I wouldn't say it's high on the like of, uh, possibility scale at, th at this point in time. Can you say whether whether she started outside and then moved inside the building? Or Sort of the, the yeah, it's our understanding, and again, you know, I, I'm going to qualify this with the fact that um, this is early on in the investigation. Our detectives have so much work to do, but yes, we believe the shooting incident began outside and then moved into the uh, front of the building. Do you know where okay. she worked there? Do not. We have seven people who have sustained gunshot wounds today, including the shooter. We have six victims, two of which are going to. God willing, they will survive. Um, and then uh, three who have lost her. Am I doing the math right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if you know 
Yeah. yeah. We have. Uh, so what about the weapon? What, the right. Yeah, seven, seven injured by gunfire. Four are deceased, including the suspect. Did the suspect say anything that anyone is aware of? And did it appear she was targeting a particular individual? No, nothing has been brought. I'll get it. But yeah, um, nothing. Ha nothing that has been brought to my attention at this point. The motive. We are still trying to work on any kind of motive for it. So I don't have an answer for that right now. It, it, it was a single weapon, uh, a nine millimeter Glock, nine millimeter Glock, uh, which was registered and owned by the suspect. We have one right there, sir. Sure. How did law enforcement? Uh, she was uh, injured by a self-inflicted gunshot wound on the floor. She was um, in critical condition from the outset at the time we responded. So she was transported to an area hospital where she has since passed away. Sheriff, 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 had this um, facility been the source of any other calls from your department? I mean, have there been problems there perhaps involving the shooter or involving someone else? No, none that we are familiar with and certainly none involving the suspect in this case that we're familiar with. It's a, it's a, the whole area here is a large business area, as you see. Um, so you know, the, the deputies and often our, our municipal partners and the state police are down in this area for different calls. Uh, obviously nothing to this degree, but nothing involving uh, this, nothing related to this incident or involving this suspect. How many magazines? How many magazines? I, I believe there were two, uh, perhaps three, but again, and as I said, I'm going to qualify things with the fact that we are early into the investigation. How many shots fired roughly do you know? I, I do not know. And this gentleman right here, sir. How many people were in the building that you cleared, or how many people were there at the time that you shooting roughly? Obviously, you don't know I, I don't know how many employees are in, in the Rite Aid building. Do we have an idea? Yeah. Um, throughout the three buildings that make up the complex, there were uh, probably more than 100. There were quite a few people. Uh, one third of that huge building is Rite Aid, so I don't know how many were in the Rite Aid building. Sir, we have one over here. John, are there private security guards there, or were they armed at all? I understand that Rite Aid employs private security, but we do not believe that there were any there at the time of the incident. And we have was one right here at the time of the shooting. She was a temporary employee uh, working her normal work day. I don't know what time that began, but re who reported for her normal work day today at the business? Any idea how she got in with these weapons? I, I do not have an answer for that. Have one over here. She had key access to the building? I don't know if she had key access or the employees. Uh, I, I don't know how the access works for Rite Aid. Um, that would be a question for investigators a, as they work through or, or the company itself later on. Um, we, we have ages uh, and, and the sexes. We're not going to be releasing that at this point. We will get that out through our public information officer just as soon as we can. We don't want people to see this and say, you know, a 26, and I'm, this is not the case, but a 26 year old female and then they, they, uh, they're missing someone who fits that description. So we are not releasing any information as to uh, anything that could nail down the identity of our victims. Okay. You have confirmed that all those that were involved were right aid employees? No. Um, I, detectives may have at this point, but not that it's come to my attention. They were all in the Rite Aid building. We believe them to be all employees, but is that 100%? No, it's not. Do you, down here, sir? do you believe the victims knew the suspects and any relationship, or do you think I, it was a random just workplace shooting trying to shoot up as many people as possible? I, I do not know how well they knew each other. She was employed there. Uh, apparently, it was not her first day, so there had to be some uh, some knowledge uh, of the suspect by the employees of that business. We have one over here, sir. Uh, I've just been told that they do not look like they're life-threatening injuries. Any surveillance, any surveillance cameras or footage that you can pull from on this? The, there's, there's cameras on the property and inside the property, which our detectives will be, um, you know, have looked at and will be obviously uh, analyzing very closely to try to get us a better picture of everything that took place there. I, I, I know nothing. In these few hours, I know nothing about how, what, what security there is or is not. One more question. Claire, what was what the hospital did the suspect die in? I, I'm not sure which hospital she was went it to. Local or was it Baltimore? Trauma center. Local, trauma local trauma center. Local, uh, local trauma center. So. Yeah. Was Harvard, was I don't believe it was Harford. I, I, I do not yeah, know. Not the shooting was inside or outside? Both. 
There were, there were people shot inside and outside the business. We believe it began outside and moved inside. And this will be our last question. Are you There are multiple addresses associated with the uh, suspect, so we are chasing all leads as any police department who um, finds themselves in this unfortunate position of dealing with such a tragic incident. Um, you know, we will chase them as far until they end. Vehicles and homes, yes. And that's it. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will get something out as soon as we can through uh, in our PIO office. Thank you. We